interested in Christian sex tips? As a Christian sex therapist, simply educating some of my clients on the material that we're going to cover in this video has helped them improve their intimacy, and it can help you too. The following 10 tips and a bonus tip at the end come from my favorites, Dr. Clifford and Joyce Penner, and their little book, What Every Wife Wants Their Husband to Know About Sex. So let's get started. Number one, talking about sex is vital to keeping love, passion, and intimacy alive in your sex life. Great sex doesn't just happen, but if you're intentional, you can make it fantastic. Communication is key. I know this topic isn't always comfortable, but it's important that you become comfortable talking about it with your spouse. This allows the two of you to connect better. It's also wonderful if you're able to talk about sex outside of the bedroom and truly listen to one another and truly listen to each other's hearts and desires. Number two, men often connect and feel love through sex. Women tend to desire sex as the consequence of feeling loved and connected. Put another way, men want to have sex to feel close and women need and want to feel close before they have sex. This is just God's great way of getting us to communicate. Number three, the man has the key to the woman's sexuality, affirmation. Women are two tracked. They are physical and emotional. The man is one track, just physical, and that's great. But for the woman, it is physical and emotional. So if you want to be able to have it be great for both of you, you need to be able to connect with your wife emotionally. Number four, there is no way a husband can know and meet the complex and diverse sexual needs of his wife unless she guides him. Okay, ladies, you are wonderfully and beautifully made. You are completely complex, unique, and different in every way. Your husband's not always going to know what you want and need. I know you think sometimes, well, if I tell him, then it doesn't count. But that's not exactly true. You need to be able to communicate with him. Most men are wanting to do what makes you happy and wanting to connect with you. But if they don't know, they just feel helpless. So being able to give him some tips, give him some direction, this is things that's gonna really help him to be able to connect with you. And if you ask for the things that you want, you're more likely to get them because you've asked. And men, be humble and open to hearing your wife's heart. Number five, you are responsible to communicate your unique needs, idiosyncrasies, and preferences from moment to moment. Again, don't keep your spouse guessing. Open up with each other. It's important that you can trust one another to speak up in the moment if there's anything that you don't like or anything that's painful. This allows your spouse to feel free and comfortable to be with you during intimacy and know and trust you that if anything they do you don't like, you'll be able to speak up. We are all responsible for ourselves. Number six, a man needs to keep his pace lagging slightly behind her pace in both activity and intensity. In regards to intimacy, women are much slower than men. So for it to be good for both of you, husbands, you should go slower than you would naturally go and allow your wife to catch up with you. So try giving her a massage, tease her a little bit, allow her some time to catch up to you and your pace and where you're at. This will allow it to be better for both of you. Number seven, kissing is the essence of passion. Keep kissing. Kissing activates dopamine and oxytocin. Dopamine is the chemical that is more of your newness attraction factor. Oxytocin is excreted when a mother is breastfeeding, so this is more of an attachment. So when you're kissing, you actually activate newness and attachment. So keep kissing in and out of the bedroom. Number eight, everyone is vulnerable to outside temptation. Guard against it. No one is exempt from temptation. Please don't let your pride get in the way and make you think that you are exempt. It's important that we all put up protection around our marriage. Talk with your spouse about what safeguards you can have in place to protect your marriage. Number nine, temporary disruptions of sexual functioning are normal. Persistent disruptions of sexual functioning will require outside intervention. All married couples go through disruptions in their sexual life at some point in time, and this is completely normal. And it's important that you also know that this is normal to happen. However, if it's persistent, then you may wanna seek out help. Also, if you are having any kind of pain, that needs to be worked on pretty much immediately. That is something that can't be allowed. If there's any pain, you need to stop. There are different ways that you can get help. It may just be your medical doctor. Perhaps you need to take your gynecologist appointment. You might need sex therapy. There's also a physical therapy with pelvic floor specialist. There's a variety of different ways and different things that will work specifically to you and what your concerns are. But what's most important is you begin this first step and begin to seek out help. Number 10, like everything else in life, sex won't always be a 10. Make sure your expectations are realistic. Hollywood should not be your example. 
And as mentioned earlier, a bonus tip. Men, to improve your lovemaking with your wives, touch in circles and not straight lines. Women are different. For more tips, please check out our four-part video series, Somewhere Around Here on Lovemaking. And if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and please leave us a comment down below. And as always, subscribe for more weekly influential encouragement and inspiration. See you next time. Bye.